Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 31 of Darwell20's Let's Play of All the Mods Skyblock, where today, uh, good times are happening, actually. Um, so between episodes, when the sun came up, remember last episode I was playing with this Apotheosis spawner, so when the sun came up, it stopped spawning. So for whatever reason, the blaze spawner stopped working when the sun was up, even though it was, you know, ignoring light. I even filled the area in with, with, with stone so that it would be dark in there. Still no mob spawns. So I don't know what that was about. So I decided to add the dragon egg, which ignores conditions. It ignores two conditions. Number one, it ignores the fact that the sun is up, which is good news. It also ignores the fact that there is a blaze sitting on top of it, which means that with the dragon egg on there, we do get lots and lots of blazes hanging out in that spot. Check that out. So that's what I was looking for. So I'm very excited that this is doing what I wanted it to do. Um, because that's cool, right? Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. So two things I want to do today. Uh, I would like to get an emerald so that I can get the next tier of orb. Right? Isn't that what a tier do? Or is it, isn't it an emerald? Am I crazy? Ah, uh, it's a redstone block. So really? It's a redstone block? I thought it was an emerald. Dire, please. There you go. Uh, so that I can get uh, the sacrificial rune, uh, the rune of sacrifice, which will make my life a little bit easier. But I'm pretty sure I need the tier two rune for that guy. Uh, so we want some runes of sacrifice. I probably also wouldn't mind some runes of capacity so we can get the tier three rune going. But we'll start with Sacrifice and we'll go from there. Deal? Though I'm pretty sure Capacity might need Imbued, which is the Tier 3 rune. Though we are technically at a Tier 3 state right now. Uh, so I can get the Imbued Slate. And add it to the list. The other thing I want to do is probably add a Fluid Detector here. And... What we'll say is sensor mode. Just get a quick counting filter for you. Um, is it called blood or is it called life essence? Pretty sure it's called life essence. There we go. Bucket of life. Cool. So let's say if you're... Hmm. Yeah. So if you have eight buckets in there, I'm at a redstone signal. Okay. That should be cool. I kind of want it to do the opposite. How many buckets are in there at the moment? Are you not actually working? Bucket of life. Yeah, that should be cool. Two buckets. Okay, that's working. Eight buckets? Right, you don't have eight buckets. Okay, right, perfect, cool. So once you do have eight buckets, it'll turn on the signal, right? Uh, so my problem is, is I want that to be the opposite. Hmm. Might need to think about that one real quick. Yeah. We'll see. I'll come up with a thought for that. Uh, but either way, uh, we're in good shape here because we now have our tier two rune, our orb, which can go towards the runes of sacrifice. Cool. And then we can get Let's start with 10 of them. That sound cool? I might need this to just be regular old stone. As you can see, I did a little bit of smelting between episode for stone. Sweet. Okay. 
That will make my blazes go a lot further. So now, whenever I do that, you go by a, a significant margin. Much better. Okay, cool. So now we want to get probably our tier three stuff going. So I need to figure out how to invert this thing. But yeah, look how many blazes we get. It's actually pretty ridiculous. It's so good. All right, let me think about this problem real quick for a minute. Um, what I could do is make it so that you need a redstone signal to run. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Or I could make it so that you require a redstone signal to insert. How about that? I like that. You need a redstone signal on white to, or on, let's say, orange to insert, right? And then you emit on orange when you have 10 buckets of blood. How's that? Cool? So we control the insert and the extract side. So watch this. I turn off the lever, he's allowed to run, right? And then what he'll do is when he drops below eight buckets, he won't be allowed to insert items anymore. See how the, how the laser turned off? So now he's not allowed to insert items until we get above eight buckets. Boom. Now he was allowed to insert again. Now he's not allowed to insert again. Cool? I like that. All right. Now the only thing is I want to make it nine buckets. So that's good times. Okay, so now we'll, we'll keep this going until we get some imbued slates so that we can get some runes of capacity. So what I want to do is get this up to 32. I might, yeah, we'll keep it at 32. It should be fine. I'll just come back in a sec once we get all that going. Yeah, I like that. That's That, that works for me. Look at how crazy this is. Like, it's just constant. There is a never-ending swarm of blazes here ready for me to kill. And I think it will still stop at 32 because that's what we have the, the spawner set to. So I think at most you'll have 32 blazes kind of packed into a little corner here. And you could reduce that number if you wanted to um, with the max entities count. Uh, what was it? Apotheosis, spawner, gas tiers. So I have it up to 32 right now. I could probably drop that down to like 10 and it would be just as reasonable. Because see there, max entities is 32. But meh, whatever. It's all good. But how bananas is that, huh? It's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like all, I like it a lot. All right, back in a few. I'm gonna do this. All right, I forgot to make this an actual tier three altar. That's on me. That's on me, my bad, my bad. What is it? Uh, I need to put glowstone. I was like, why isn't this working? Oh, right, I forgot to actually make you a tier three altar. I put the, I put the sacrifice runes down there. So you know what, technically none of that sacrifice rune was doing anything this whole time? Dire, please. So what is it? One, two, and then the glowstone. You know, you're trying to speed run the thing, and then you realize you make little mistakes like that. All right, so that should be cool. Hey, there we go. Nice. That's pretty cool. All right, so we're at 5,000 now. Fifty-one forty per kill. There we go. Six buckets. Yeah, that's pretty good. I can't quite figure out. Well, some of them have low health. Maybe that's why. Either way. It's better. I wonder if there's a limit to how fast I can insta-shot things, because it sounds like I'm not instantly killing things that often. I'm not sure. Anyway, back in a sec. Yeah, if I slow down, it's definitely. I bet there's. I bet there's like a one second limit on how fast you can kill things with the instant shot, which is kind of funny if you think about it. All right, let's go. Ruins of capacity, maybe in the center here. Now, does the rune of capacity need a? Uh, it needs three buckets. Okay, cool. So that. 
Does it need the tier three orb? It just needs the imbued there. Sweet, actually good. Excellent. Okay, so now you're capable of holding 26 buckets. Perfect. And then if I want my orb tier three, that's gold for 25,000. So all we gotta do is fill this guy up, get ourselves a gold block, and then we have our tier three orb. And then it's on to uh, working on a tier four altar so we can get the rituals. Which remember, that's kind of what we're after a little bit. All right, my lever. And at this point, I'm gonna bump the sensor up to, let's say 20 buckets before you insert something so that when we get to the tier four altar and we need more buckets, we're ready for that stage, right? And that should be cool. Excellent. You finish up, please. Dude, I love that they're silent. I love that they are no AI. I love everything about this blaze spawn setup. It's just the best. It's so cool. How cool is it, right? Like my opinion, pretty stinking cool. Good, my orb's done. Thank you, bound to me. All right, now we have to go into the demon realm to find the berries that we need for the next tier of thing, right? Is that, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago that I did this in my Let's Play series. So the other thing I could do, by the way, is if the blood altar is filled completely, turn off the blaze spawner. That, that, would, that would be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? Should I do that? I feel like I should do that. Are you off right now? You should be. That's just a testament to how many blazes can pack into there, right? But what we could do is something like we come over here and we do laser IO. And on the up, we will have an output on the redstone magenta channel. Is that cool? And then we can bind you. this guy and then you can have a sensor card with another filter because I want a different sensor on this guy right and then you're going to be bucket of life when you're at 26 because that's the that's the max right you will emit a redstone signal on the magenta channel Okay, so if I turn you off right now, you're allowed to spawn. But once it's full, it should turn off. And it's not. Why is it not? Are you emitting on magenta? That's interesting. Oh, you know what? Because redstone signal equals you're allowed to run. Ah, that's right. That's right. Yep, never mind. Hold on. That's the reverse. That's the reverse of what we want. We want to turn off the redstone signal. Yeah, I might need to do something with... Uh... Is Super Circuit Maker in this pack? It is. I might need to do something clever with that um to do some inverting because I'd, I'd want to be able to control it still with the lever um and automatically turn it off when it's full so we'll deal with that in a minute be right back all right let's try to do this uh redstoney bit here so question if i have on the up here a input on blue you're not active at the moment if i flip this lever are you active? You are. Good. That's what I wanted to see. Perfect. 
as you can see, I've got a little bit of Super Circuit Maker stuff in my inventory here, so that's cool. So what I'm going to say is I would like to set up a redstone circuit such that this lever needs to be on and we need to be not full in the altar. And by not full, I mean less than 26 buckets of life, which is the max at the moment. Um, and then we can adjust that as needed. Cool. So what I'm going to have here then is we will have a... Um, couple more nodes okay and I'm probably just gonna bring you down here ish so we'll bind you to you let's also bind you and connect you to this guy Is that cool and then finally we'll connect you to this guy right so on the up I would like you to output a redstone signal on red. And red will be the danger signal, like mobs are spawning now. Cool? So you're gonna output on red. You're gonna read on light blue, on channel three or blue, if the lever is active, which currently it's not. And then channel two, which is magenta, is do we have 26 buckets or more, right? So basically we want this signal to be on and that signal to be on in order for, or this one to be off and that one to be on in order for this to work, right? So what we'll want, connect you like that, right? So you're gonna be an output from magenta, which is greater than 26 right now. And you're going to be an output for channel three, which is the lever at the top. Cool. Now, we should probably move that lever at the top so that it's not directly affecting the spawning, because that will be a problem. So let's put the lever one forward, which is here. That might be a problem. That might not be a good place for it. Right, because you're above my, whatchamacallit, yeah. I could put him further back one. That could work. Yeah, that works for me. So then I'll put you on the up, which is the input on blue, right? So now if the lever's clicked, he's got a redstone signal. And this guy is not running, which is pretty much what we want. Cool. Now, in theory, I think I could probably remove all of these and be just fine. Right? In theory. And then let's connect you to you. Okay, cool. So now that's good. I flipped that lever. Oh, you were connecting all of those, weren't you? Yeah, so let's bring you into the fold once more. Good, so you're cool. That's neat, right? Like that. So you should be outputting on channel three. Oh, you're off, that's why. Now you should be on. Good, okay, cool. So now for this guy. So we want our tiny pile of redstone dust and we want the screwdriver from Super Circuit Maker. Okay, and we're gonna say, you come in and you come in. And you immediately go to a redstone torch. And then we want an AND gate here, right? Which is, what I'm actually gonna do is have this be a little bit lower for the AND gate, okay? And then we're going to have you come up here, and then we'll have you and you, right? This is an AND gate. And then we can do this, 
and this, and that. I'm pretty sure that's an AND gate. And then output. Cool? So check this out. Um, the lever's on. And we're not, and we're full, so it's off, right? Now, if I used a little bit of this, see how he just toggled on? Because we just started using life points, right? So that one's no longer full, so he turned on the signal. If this guy is off, the signal is off because this one's on, or this one's off, right? Cool. And then if this were full, I can simulate with a one of these. There we go, 26 buckets. This is now emitting a redstone signal, which turns this off. They're both saying don't run, right? Because it's full, so don't run. And the lever's off, so don't run. So this should be cool. So now all we got to do is input on red. And you're groovy, right? Cool. So now, watch what happens when I flip this lever. As soon as he starts draining, the mob spawner should be running now. <laughs> right? Because you're emitting a redstone, and then you on the up... Output weak redstone channel 14. You should be running. Why are you not running? Oh, because you're not connected here. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Laser IO. I need to connect you to that. And then now you should be running. Cool. And he is. You see that? Sir, come on. Got him. Cool. And then as soon as it's full again, He'll stop running. Now, I could probably limit. What I'm going to do is turn this off. And then as soon as this is full, like it is now, the mob spawner should be disabled. My goodness. You can tell it's disabled down there. It just it 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 spawns so many of these things. Max entities thirty two. Maybe I bring down the max entities, right? Um, plus two max entities is a gas tier. So what we want is to use gas tiers with nether quartz in the offhand to reduce it. So how about max entities can become ten or eight? Eight sounds like a good number, right? So if I turn you on now, let's let's bring it down to four. Okay, as soon as that starts trickling, that should be good. And now we should have no more than four mobs here at a time. Unless max entities is ignored because of the dragon, but we'll see. So if I turn you off, you should no longer be allowed to spawn, regardless of the fact that you need LP. One, two, three, four. Hey, that works for me. That's perfect, actually. That's actually quite good. So what I think, instead of four being the max, I'm going to make it eight. There we go. And that should be pretty close to perfect. I like that a lot, as a matter of fact. I really do. I think that's super cool. And that will make our lives a lot easier. Sweet. I'm down with that. Okay. So with all this stuff said and good, let's get our next stage, which is the edge of the hidden realm. So I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to let you run. We'll kill the mobs that spawn here. Let's get you to finish up what you're working on. So see, everything's cool. I thought I turned you... Oh, yeah, maybe I didn't. So now what's going to happen is he's going to keep running until the altar's full. And now no more mobs, because altar's full. How awesome is that? How great is it? I love it. That is so cool. Sorry, I get all excited still.
you know, Dyer enjoys his automations. I really do. It's super fun for me to, like, come up with a way to make this super awesome. And it's, in fairness, pretty awesome. Right? How right? How right? It's so cool. Loving it. Loving it. So, uh, now let's get our ritual going. So we're going to need, uh, ritual stuff. So we're going to want ritual stones, a master ritual stone, and a ritual diviner, uh, which is going to need, uh, I think that's a magma cream. Air is what, a gas tier? Obsidian and lapis. So lapis. Gas tier. Obsidian. Magma cream. See, and now it's spawning again because we used up LP. Right? How cool. Love it. And it'll only spawn eight. That'll be the max that it gets. Which I think is a nice compromise between, you know, a large number and a not large number. All right, so then let's turn you into a ritual diviner. And then let's get ourselves some ritual stones, which needs reinforced slates. So I will snag those. We will make a bunch of ritual stones out of this. Now, what does the ritual diviner for the, what's it called again? Edge of the Hidden Realm. Okay, that's going to need a total of 36 runes. Okay, so in total, we're going to need 40 runes. Um, so ritual stones, and then we'll do one quick upgrade to a master ritual stone. Okay, and then we're going to need you running again, which will immediately turn on our blaze spawner. Now. Aha! How cool. And we'll get a bunch more tier two runes. Which will be cool. Back in a sec when I get them. If only I could automate this sword. But I'm pretty sure Blood Magic like goes out of its way to prevent you from being able to do that. Because when we tried in the Let's Play series, it was like, nope. All the things we tried to do to make it automate, it was just, nope. I recognize I'm a fake player, so I'm not letting you do the thing. Alright, eight more reinforced runes gets me that. And that. 36. Boom. Cool. All right, let's go stick this thing maybe over here-ish. Does that sound cool? Uh, what I'll probably do is get some more of you, which we should have lots of stone for now. And that works. So if we look in the book, we'll know what it looks like roughly. So we probably just, <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to center it so that at least it's a little bit good looking. And we'll put our Master Ritual Stone here. And that should be all she wrote, right? And then while that's building, let's get ourselves a Activation Crystal. There it is. Weak Activation Crystal is a Lava Dude. That just needs three buckets. Also, I think I figured out where my buckets were going before. I think they went into here. Okay, three buckets check. Make sure that you're bound to me. Uh, and at this point we need enough LP to activate it. And so what's the activation cost? 80,000. Good times. So what I'm going to do is get my tier 3 orb, which is the magician's one, right? That's the tier 3? Yes. We'll stick that in there. That will start filling up. I can keep an eye on my LP here, and then we'll do this for a little bit. Again, off camera. All right, I do believe I'm up to 94,000, so that's good. I took my orb out. So now as I fill up the altar, the spawner should stop. Oh, that is just the best. I'm glad I did that.
<laughs> I'm glad I did that. Oh, and then you need 10,000 LP to turn you into uh, an activation crystal. It automatically turns on the mob spawner. It's so cool. I really like this combination of Apotheosis and Blood Magic. Like, I think this is just one of the coolest ways we've done it. Like, I liked, I liked in my Let's Play when I did the, the portal thingy, but this is pretty cool. If I, if I do say so myself, this is a nice one. All right, so bound to me by right-clicking, and then we can activate you. A rush of energy flows to the crystal. Awesome. All right, so let's wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. We'll go into our dungeon. We'll get our Tau Fruit. We'll get into Golden Tau Fruit. We'll use it to make a Tier 4 altar, and then we'll cruise on from there. Uh, then I want to get, you know, rituals and all that stuff. So for now, Double 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time uh, to do more of this fun stuff. Um... And then we'll we'll see what's next because I'm I'm basically getting into all the mods, knowing that pretty much every mod I'm gonna need some component of in order to make that end game creative item. So I'm kind of just dabbling in each of the mods to to be ready to progress through them. And also I'm doing it in an order such that it's easier for me to progress. Right? Like I did I did Batania first for a reason, and that reason is I want to do a Mana Enchanter because soon I'm gonna need to do. Um, Tardic gems, which are heavily affected by fortune and looting. So I want to throw like a heavy duty looting on the Sentient Sword, which will be easier because I'm going to have the Man Enchanter from Batania. For now, Dull 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.